Sometimes the best way to shake an average person out that does not do their own research is by pumping every other asset and giving them shiny object syndrome. What's going on guys? Kevin Cage here with another cryptocurrency update. Hope y'all had a phenomenal weekend. In this video, we're going to be diving into the XRP price chart, HBAR, Elgrand, XLM, and a few other sleepers. And let's dive in. So my last video was in fact Friday, September 10th, XRP plus Hedera. We we're showing this chart, going through a few looks actually, and showing yes, Algo is at the 1618. It reached that $2 plus price point. And of course, Hedera was ready positioned with the swing high, swing low. Golden Cross is sitting on the 236. Everyone's saying it's going to zero. I'm at 29 cents saying, nope, we are going higher. And uh, it's good to see that we did get that climb. So let's see where we're at today rather than sitting on that 50% retracement. And today, look where we're at. So absolutely beautiful to see it play out relatively similar. Now, just so you guys know, I do not know the order of assets always because they can fluctuate. I don't know the exact day it goes. If anybody says that, they're full of BS. For me, I'm looking on the macro timeframes. I buy low and I sell at a higher price. For anybody that's been watching the channel, we know that we are able to buy each bar at one cent as well. I didn't get my DCA there though. Unfortunately, I think my dollar cost average for H bar is around like five to six cents. Um, I know we were in the group, thanks to digital asset investor, you know, King Solomon years ago, buying H bar on the first exchange it was ever listed on. And it's great to see that it's really popular now and people are paying attention to how big this behemoth is. And this is one of those assets that I feel is right there next to XRP. Same with Algo, um, QNT, of course. And I'm gonna kind of dive in and share some of what I do when it comes to analysis. It is not just charting. Um, of course, you know, technical analysis, looking at the charts is cool. It can help you kind of forecast things similar to the weather, but it's not an exact science. So what I do is obviously I try to find other confluences between the roadmap of the project. Why would HBAR pump? Well, because we know that staking is going live shortly. Okay, well, why would XRP pump again? Well, Flare Networks should be going live shortly. How did we catch that DAG ride for a 2030X? Well, DAG staking is coming live shortly. So I'm really riding these waves and just like QNT, um, you know, with the main net, with all its exciting things regarding its roadmap, it just keeps going. So when you're looking at some major announcements ahead that are actually substantial and not hype and not just a temporary exchange listing, you can really see some exciting things. So I know HBAR got listed on what? KuCoin and I think another place. That's good and great. I don't have any doubt with HBAR long term whatsoever. And just so you know, when I show like the 1618 and say, okay, 60 cents in the future, week over week, people go, that's all you think HBAR is going to do? No, this is just showing you from a trading perspective. My long term bags are packed. The same thing goes for XRP. You guys really think I think XRP only goes to two, three, or even eight dollars? Come on. But, anyways. Beautiful to see that we're finally breaking that all-time high. RSI is in that powerful point, of course, piercing exactly what we're looking for. And if you have time and you're new to the channel, um, I encourage you to go watch this video, XRP plus Hedera, um, posted on September 10th. Just breaking it down, um, 20 minutes. I don't watch any video on 1x speed. As you guys know, um, I go playback speed and I put it on 2x on everything. I'll even try to listen to 2x on uh, in other languages and my, my buddies think I'm crazy. But I like being crazy. So... Let's see what I wanted to show you. I'm gonna show you a few other sleepers like XLM that is still below its retracement. XRP as well is poised right there sitting on the 382. We'll break that down. But yes, I do fully anticipate that Algo is following Solana to some degree. Now, will it just fluctuate before getting that next leg up? I don't know. But what I'm saying is I believe there's higher price targets coming within this bullish cycle that are significantly higher, of course, around these targets. And they actually do have a confluence with the previous all time high levels. So you guys can look at these golden extensions, decide for yourselves. This is how I am playing it, at least on the relatively, I guess I should say um, medium term, because it does take weeks, sometimes months to get to these levels. We're talking about H bar at 17 cents. Ramp and DAG were at 17 cents. The majority was wrong and they said H bar would get there uh, to 40 cents first. Meanwhile, we got ramp and we got DAG trades all the way to 40 cents. And now H bar, of course, was last but not least. So it's really cool. And that was actually luck in terms of the order. But I did actually get that one right. I've been wrong before, guys, and nobody is right every single time. I'm going to be wrong on the channel in the future. So just keep that in mind. We're all doing our best to speculate in a speculative market where utility is coming. So, of course, you guys know my thoughts. Um, I post them all over Twitter. 
Elgo is behind somewhat Luna and Solana. And of course, I believe that sometimes Q and T and even DAG are actually leading those guys. And then H bar shortly behind Elgo. And now we're going to find where's the next H bar? Yes, I believe H bar probably continues to climb week over week. Um, of course, and goes to several dollars at some point in the near future. But I want to find other assets that are at these levels. So what can we do? And of course, I love H bar guys. Don't get me wrong. But you see, we came up back test on these EMAs come up again we're just battling this 382 we back test almost on the 236 at different levels and then finally go we can look at algo the same way and now let's look at xrp and xlm the brother and sister whether you think they're in uh, competition or not that's fine i think there is so much money in this ecosystem i've heard um dan moorhead ceo of pantera capital one of the first and largest cryptocurrency hedge funds in the world say verbatim and we've shown it on this channel thinking crypto's shown it during his interviews Dan Moore had said XRP will be one of the top 10 networks in the next 10 years. So if you think this cryptocurrency market is going to 10 trillion, 20 trillion or 50 trillion in the future, because I believe it eclipses the dot com bubble. What do you think happens? So here's some food for thought, and I hope you guys are sticking with me. If the cryptocurrency market cap today is at 2 trillion, 2T, that's nothing. Of course, this will eclipse the dot com bubble by, you know, five, 10, 20, even 50 trillion dollars someday. In my opinion, what we have is Bitcoin's at one trillion almost alone. If assets are in the top 10 and even XRP at the top six, whether it's at top two, top one or top 10, I don't care. In this entire market is at a 20 trillion valuation or 50 trillion or 100 trillion. What do you think these assets will go to? Uh, you're right, It'll, they'll be measured in the trillions. And of course, XRP will be solely responsible for sending a huge portion of the cross-border payments. It's not competing with Ethereum. Ethereum, I hope it figures out clever ways to scale. I have my eyes on a few interesting projects, of course, with the promise of Ethereum 3.0. But of course, I am hedged because I'm focused on DAG type of technology or assets that leverage blockchain and DAG type of technology like HBAR and of course, Constellation. So I'm watching that. And there's also a few other sleepers that I'm watching that could be big competitors to Solana. I know everybody loves Sol. It's made everybody money. I don't care if an asset makes me money, though. I kind of also care for long term considerations in terms of security and what portion the holders or the founders hold. There's a lot of other considerations for a long term approach. OK, so with all assets I talk about, even if I say they're going up or down, in my opinion, because it's just my opinion, you have to decide for yourselves. You have to be responsible for your own decisions. And you also have to do your own research. Imagine when the market is 10 times bigger at 20 trillion or 50 trillion, even assets in the top 10. Or notice that we did have previously in the bull run before the crash this year around April, May, we actually had assets in the top 100 that were all typically at $1 billion in valuation. And look, here's the top 100. They almost have a $1 billion market cap. This is crazy. Last year, say a $1 trillion valuation for the altcoin market cap, we we're at like 100 billion. So we've 10x from there. And so I'm so happy I've not been bearish for the past year because I would have missed on so much opportunity. Just wanted to point out the XRP price chart looking ordinary. It's not scaring me. I'm not worried about it. We're sitting right on the 382 Fibonacci retracement on the weekly, still sitting above this 8 EMA. I can remove this just so you can see it's sitting right on this orange line for the 8 exponential moving average. We can compare other assets that are in fact moving, Algo, um, HBAR, anything in between. Just wanted to point that out. And the thing is, you know, XLM is kind of forming this flag at this lower level and XRP is forming it at a higher level. I don't care what happens next. Ideally, though, I still see these prices being reached. They're going to draw differently. So we can see sitting right on the 382 retracement, whereas XLM is sitting on the 236. We have assets that are reaching the 1618. And don't even get me started on, you know, Solana, um, ADA, uh, QNT. They're all above here and some are even reaching beyond these levels. So you guys can look at those levels and be like, OK, so for this bull cycle, looks like we're really going to get moving. And this is being conservative. This is not considering the previous all time high. Remember, a lot of assets have already created an all time high price. XRP is not yet. So I focus on assets that one have strong fundamentals, have strong integrations, and most likely still will break their all time high and beyond in the future. Sometimes the best way to shake an average person out that does not do their own research is by pumping every other asset and giving them shiny object syndrome. And of course, Algo, great long term hold. But the thing is, I want my money to work for me in the best way possible. So if it does follow Soul, it's going to keep running week over week. And that'll be pretty interesting. I used to own a bunch of Cosmos or Adam back in the day, thanks to a lot of good friends and crypto Twitter. And I sold a bunch. Actually, I don't even think I sold it five dollars. I think I sold it like three dollars and then it just pumped and left me. Um, but I did put it into ADA and then I sold ADA too early. So don't be like me. And nonetheless, this bull run has and will more than make up for it in the future.
Friendly reminder, we've been saying this for a while, I believe since even May, saying that DAG was in fact ahead and it was leading the way. Um, I could imagine that HBAR will come to this level, you know, Algo's around this level, Solana's up here, Q&T, they're all kind of pushing. So we're going to simply see still sitting above the EMA after an asset does a 30x or 40x. It's okay for an asset to calm down and even potentially crash and consolidate before getting that next leg up. So for me, I'm just holding my DAG ready to stake and earn more. And they are one of the only assets that has active contracts with the Department of Defense. And there's big things coming. So keep your eyes open and always do your own research, guys. Don't buy anything I share unless you know how to do your own research. If you have to ask, where can I buy this coin? You probably should not be buying this coin yet. Of course, you can go on coinmarketcap.com. You can type in any asset you would like. And if you go to Gala, for example, you click Gala, click Market, and you can scroll down and see which ass or which exchange it's available on. Just a little helpful trick for anybody that is brand new to crypto. And of course, you can see it was listed on Binance and now has a tether pair. So I can buy it with USDT, which is another stable coin. Here's what I shared the other week, and I'll be sharing some new stuff. So be sure to tune in and follow me on Instagram as well for additional insights along with TikTok. Links are in the video description. We'll click on this guy, just HBAR Algo Luna showing again, leading the way. And the same thing when H4 was sitting on the 702 at 30 cents. And of course, we were watching the RSI waiting for it to pierce. And this is what I was pointing out. Algo pierced and Luna pierced. And let's go check on the weekly price chart for Hedera and look at this weekly. When XRP gets to this level, look out. They all go in different orders. I don't know who goes or when they go, but when they shoot, they shoot. And what did we do? We pierced this purple. So essentially what I just want to point out is this. We pierced right through that purple and came up. So this relative strength is strong. And this is when the fun happens, when the all-time high prices are created. And right now, we're almost in price discovery. And this is when it gets interesting. Of course, you've already seen what Solana did. And so this is an example of Solana that could be ahead, where, you know, HBAR is coming up here, Algo's here, Solana's up here. And this is wick to wick on the weekly. And of course, you know, DAG, q &T, they've exceeded our expectations. But we did get that tease wick from Solana at this higher level. So we'll keep an eye on this. Full disclosure, I do not own any Solana. I'm simply using this as a guide for my trading strategy, which is right for me. You guys have to decide what is right for you and we all have our own way of seeing things. And remember, this RSI is still in position and we're just waiting for them. So right now we're at about 40, 40 I'd say, let's see, like 49 for XLM and about 54, 55 for XRP. But we need this to start turning up yet again after this period of consolidation in this little pennant that we're forming. So sitting on the three, two, and yes, of course, I do believe that we create all time high prices. The question is, what is Bitcoin going to do next? And I think a lot of people are wondering the same thing. And I'll show you what I'm thinking, because this recent crash kind of scared everybody. And in my opinion, what I'm thinking is right here, we're sitting on the 50 percent retracement. This is candle bodies with the Fibonacci. And I mean, even if we did some scary back test to the 236 around 40K or 37K or even lower, I think we still bounce. Now, I showed this in my live stream last night for patrons links in the video description, and I'll show you exactly why. So notice we have XDC, just another asset. It did draw a bit differently. And we're going to compare this with Bitcoin and show you that we actually made it to the 702 perfectly with Bitcoin. Look at that perfection using candle bodies and now crash to the 50 percent. Question is, before we finally push up and get these higher levels, are we going to come down again? And of course, I have a bullish perspective. If you're bearish, that's fine. I'm just showing you how I see it. I could be wrong and I just want to be transparent with that. OK, so. Now, going at this level, we can kind of wick to wick and see. And remember, another asset that shows exactly reaching the 1618 or essentially pretty damn close sitting on the 8 EMA. This is another asset that is doing this. You really think that XRP, XLM, Zcash, Ontology, all these assets are not going to do the same thing. Bitcoin Cash, EOS, um, you know, Ethereum Classic, any tokens that you guys are looking at that are well below their value, even Monero, they're well below the retracement levels and typically However long it takes, they will reach these higher levels, which for me is like free money. So I'm super excited to take advantage of this while the bullish cycle lasts, because I think people forgot what it was like to wait two or three years when XRP was under, well, I mean, 30 cents day in and day out. And now people are complaining that we're sitting at a dollar. I can do this all day. That's laughable. I think the XRP investors are going to be some of the hardest, toughest investors in the years ahead because we learned what it was like to hold, watch other assets take off. And I still believe that it will be worth the wait. And I don't sell my XRP to chase other coins. I have other tokens. And of course, when they appreciate in value, I rebalance my portfolio as I shared last night on the live stream. And then I show you that strategy. And then I can rebalance and buy more XRP for long term. I can add to my cash position. I can add to my trading bag. It's the best of both worlds and you're hedging your hedges. So anyways, Bitcoin perfection right on the 702, right? Pretty interesting. Well, what else do we have? Well, of course, swing high, swing low. 
XTC came to the 786-782 and then crashed on the 236. Bitcoin, of course, crashed on the 50. That would suck if it crashed here, but what happened after this crash? And we consolidate on the 382? Same end result. So I don't know if it's going to be a beautiful cup and handle. I don't know if it's just going to be a little V-shaped recovery or if it's going to be a really ugly thing like XTC. Nonetheless, XTC is creating all-time high prices. And of course, this has strong backing with a lot of the ISO tokens and of course, R3 Corda. The world of trade finance and crypto eddy does a great job of covering this. So keep an eye out on XTC. Um, for anybody new, you know, we are an early buyer on this sucker when it was XTCE back on the scariest exchange that I've ever used and I'll never use that again. So, all right, guys, you know what? I'll cover some XRP news in the future videos. I really just wanted to kind of break down and show you my look for the charts um, and hopefully show you an example of like what I'm doing on the macro works for me and you're going to have to find out what works for you. For me, this has been playing out exceptionally well. And even when we were talking about this on Friday at 29 cents. That's a 60% pump, if not even more. So people brag about getting a 20% pump in the stock market, and you're able to get this right now during these bullish cycles. That is crazy. Of course, you guys can figure out your targets in long term. Everybody has a different situation. Everybody has a different tax bracket. Um, wherever you are at, uh, wherever you are in the world. But nonetheless, I am excited, and I believe there are huge things coming. And one thing I do not do, and anybody, you guys can do whatever you want. I do not sell assets that are down here forming this golden cross below the 236 and 382, like XLM or even XRP sitting on the 382 or 50. Literally, when you're seeing assets come up here, why would you sell here to buy something here? I'm fo I mean, of course, maybe it goes up and you get lucky with the timing of the RSI and everything shooting, but I'm just focused on buying low, holding these guys, and they're going to make their way through these retracement levels and go up. So that's my personal opinion and how I attack it. This is not financial advice. I am not a licensed financial advisor. Simply sharing what I do on a high level, it gets way more interesting on the micro time frames. but just wanted to show you that and give you a taste. Meanwhile, while some assets are going parabolic yet again, we're getting some fake pumps, then dumps, and then some assets are really just consolidating again or doing that recovery from the recent crash for Bitcoin, my bias remains the same and I'm simply going to hold and sell at a higher price. I'm not in a rush. Of course, I would like it to go sooner than later, but I'm a slave to waiting just like everybody else. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to like, subscribe. Links are in the video description and I will catch you in the next one.